Well, hello. Tonight, I want to share some of the creepy encounters that I had while hiking the Appalachian Trail. I had a bunch of creepy slash uncomfortable things happen to me on my through hike. There's a big problem with homelessness and uh, drug abuse, um, particularly in the south, and the Appalachian Trail is a place that calls to many people, including people that have nowhere to go, and um, so you get a bunch of different characters. And most people that you encounter are really nice, good people, but every now and then you're just bound to run into a creeper. I'm gonna go in chronological order of the ones that I encountered on the trail that I was legitimately scared. Starting with um, day three, like my first official night by myself on the trail. I had made it up to the summit of Blood Mountain and the weather took a sudden turn for the worse. It started dumping rain, um, it was wind, it was just gross. Um, met a lady at the top named Tink Tink. When she heard that I was planning to camp that night, she was like, no, 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 I have a cabin. I have space, you can stay with me. So I was like, sure, that, that was awesome. So she got there first. She encountered a man who said his name was James and she didn't think anything of it at the time. Um, meanwhile, I got there, um, got cleaned up, got comfortable. We sat down um, in the living room and we were watching some TV. And at 8.30, we heard a knock at the door. And so we were both like creeped out, like who could that be? Like we both, like the sun had gone down by now and um, we knew that like most people, most hikers anyway, would be in bed by now. So it was really strange to have a knock that late. So she goes to the door and there's James and he gives her his phone number and he says, the weather's going to be bad tonight and he takes care of the cabins there. And if she needs anything, anything at all to give him a call. So she kind of like, okay, yeah, yeah, thanks, whatever, she gets rid of him. We're both creeped out enough that we're like, uh, okay, we're just gonna like lock, make sure all the windows are locked, all the doors are secure, everything. Early the next morning, I wake up to another knock at the door. This time, neither of us answers it. And then we got another knock at uh, like an hour, maybe an hour later. And this time, uh, Tink Tink goes to the door, answers it, and no one's there. So, like, we pretty much both just, like, packed up and got out of there, like, as quickly as possible. I watched him through the window, and, like, basically, like, he, I don't know what he was doing. He, like, took, like, a piece of wood from one side of the road, and he moved it over to the other side of the road. Weird vibes. So someone asked in the comments, are you even sure that that guy works there? When I got home, I, I found the contact info for Blood Mountain Cabins and I emailed them. And I asked if there was somebody employed there named James. And they said they didn't recall there being anyone there named James. So that was encounter one. My next encounter happened in North Carolina. It was the day that I got into Hot Springs. Um, so as I was hiking that day, headed toward Hot Springs, I was looking for a place to have my lunch and I saw that there was a shelter coming up. It was off a side trail. So I thought that looked like a good place to go. And I'd read something about the comments about some guy living in there and I guess I just didn't take it seriously. And um, I, I started walking there and I could see somebody was there and I was like, oh good, like another through hiker, like it'll be good to have somebody to talk to. Well, I get there and uh, yeah, this guy's like sitting on the picnic table 
and uh, I didn't see inside the shelter until I got up close. And what I saw when I got there was a tent set up inside the shelter. And so then I was like, oh no. I was close enough to the guy, I'd already kind of greeted him. And um, I was like looking for an excuse, you know, to leave without things being really awkward. So I was like, oh, uh, I was just here to check the logbook or whatever. He's like, oh, I don't think there's a pen. So I was like, okay. So I go to the logbook and I look in there and no one signed the logbook in two weeks. In my mind, I'm thinking this guy's been living here for like two weeks and everyone else is too freaked out. They're not staying here. So at that point I was like, okay, I need to get out of here. So uh, I didn't sign it, I just turned and left. In hindsight, now I'm wondering maybe nobody signed it because there was no pen. But I mean, at the same time, I also kind of assumed that he had stolen the pen. So I don't know. I get back on the trail and I basically just like, I, I walk until I find like a log to sit on just off the trail. Well, while I'm eating my lunch, who walks by but that same guy? And at that point I was like, oh my god is he following me like i just got super paranoid and freaked out um he kept walking but in my mind i was like oh like he's probably gonna like hide somewhere off the trail and like jump out at me and attack me and so like as i was hiking i was like going real slow and like looking to my left and right and trying to see around see if i could see where like someone might be able to hide and uh, i had my pepper spray out and i was just like you know i had it ready nothing happened i made it to hot springs safely and at some point when i was in town i think it might have been like a day or two later someone told me oh yeah they know about him and they've taken care of it so this was all word of mouth i have no idea who they were or how he was taken care of, but apparently the situation was resolved. This third one's kind of controversial because I don't know if you could so much call it a creepy situation, but it made me uncomfortable, so I'm including it for me. It was the day that I was hiking down into Irwin and I had just made it to the intersection where Uncle Johnny's is. I was gonna be staying at a hotel um, that was quite a ways away. So I called for an Uber. Um, that was just, I don't know, something I'm used to doing. Um, didn't think twice about it. Uh, I'd also read that it might be cheaper than some of the shuttles in town. The Uber's like getting ready to get there. He's like a minute away and uh, so I stand up, put my backpack on, getting ready to get picked up, and um, another car pulls over, um, and it's like a red SUV type thing. I, I figure it's just some sort of townsperson pulling over to make sure I was okay, I don't know, Southern Hospitality or something. So the guy asks uh, if I had a ride, I said yes, and then he was like, oh, you uh, like a local shuttle driver or Uber? And I was like, Uber. And his whole affect just changed. Like, he went from being friendly to, like, livid. So he starts kind of, like, lecturing me and berating me for, um, for calling Uber when I really should have been supporting the local businesses and yada, yada, yada. And that's not really something that, you know, I'd thought about. I just, like, knew, like, well... I, I'm comfortable with calling Uber, like, I don't know, um, that's just what I've always done, and, uh, I find it economical, and I don't know, I just liked it, and that's what I did, and so I don't really feel like I deserved to be treated like that, especially, like, being a woman alone on the side of the road, I'm kind of in a vulnerable position, and that just made it made me feel really disrespected and um that was kind of the first 
and probably only time where I just really felt like I was being treated like garbage. <laughs> Apparently this was a shuttle driver and I didn't know the guy. Um, I guess he's pretty famous in the trail community. Other people like him so I don't know why he treated me that way or what was going on but it was just really weird. If you really want to know you can go back and watch whatever episode that was. Okay, <laughs> number four. <laughs> it was the day that I hiked McAfee Knob and Tinker Cliffs and I decided I was gonna do a 20 mile day that day and I was gonna make it to Daleville. It was starting to get dark um, as I got close to town and I came upon this uh, clearing where there was kind of like the remains of a bridge over a river or I don't know a viewing platform over a river or something like that. I don't know exactly what it was. I could hear swearing before I got there and I thought oh great well there's somebody partying or something and I got up close and it was like worse than I imagined. <laughs> So this guy is just like stomping around, swearing, like he looks very unhinged. He looks like he's on the phone. I'm not sure if he's on the phone, um, but he's just kind of, you know, in his own world. Um, he sees me and he says, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't see you. I was talking on the phone with my grandma and you look like my grandma and you have beautiful skin and I'd kind of like to see it. It was like, oh my God, no. And like, I just kept hiking. <laughs> I was like, I am not even going to engage with this person. I am just going to leave. And I kept just hiking uh, as fast as I could to get to town. Cause I was almost there. I looked over my shoulder, like every few steps to make sure he wasn't following me. He wasn't, but oh, that was really scary. So I call that one Buffalo Bill. Okay, and number five is probably the scariest of all of them, and it happened last, and nothing else happened after that. This last encounter happened in Massachusetts, and it was a day that I was receiving a lot of trail magic, and I had made it to a trailhead where there were a couple people, trail angels set up, um, providing food and beer for everybody, and I was sitting there and a bunch of people, a bunch of us um, converged and met up there and we're talking and everything. It was a good time. This blue car pulls up and he's talking to the trail angels. Uh, apparently he's checking to make sure that the water caches are full and stuff. And then he sees me, but then he just kind of like hones in and he won't talk to anyone else after that. I thought that he was just like this quirky man and like he didn't really know that you should, you know, be social with everybody and not just select one person to talk to. He starts asking me all of these personal questions like, where I'm camping that night, where I'm camping the next night, and yada yada, and he's being helpful, so I don't really think anything too badly of it, but I'm also very guarded, um, and so I don't really tell him specifics about what my plans are. But unfortunately, because all of us were planning to camp at the same spot, because that was really the only place you could go, because it was basically almost dark at that point, somebody told him where, where we're camping. So after that, he gets back in his car and he leaves. And one of the trail angels comes up to me and warns me, oh, don't tell him too much. Like there have been incidents where he will uh, latch on to certain women and then he will uh, like meet them like where they're camped and then he'll wait for them to wake up. And it was just making a lot of people really uncomfortable and it was making people like, basically change their hike to try and get away from him. So that kind of made me nervous, but we're all kind of hiking in a group. There's like a big group of us now all going to the same camp and we're all kind of hiking out together. We make it to the next trailhead and we kind of, we get back into the woods and shortly um, after the road, we see a man 
just standing in the middle of the trail and it's that guy and uh, he's like holding out a bag of treats for me and he's talking again he's only talking to me he's not talking to anybody else even though I'm with a group of people <laughs> and it's just really weird I just kept hiking at that point I was just like I'm not even going to engage I'm just going that's my kind of I guess this is just what I do I just flee I suppose <laughs> that's like my fight or flight I just flee so at the time it was me and this other couple and their dog hiking together just ahead of us was like the rest of the group and we caught up to them and they were like worried enough that they were like standing waiting for us to make sure that we were okay and uh they were like yeah he was specifically asking for you jenny like he didn't want to talk to anybody else and so that was like really creepy but they didn't tell me that right away like they told me that the next day and so i didn't have that information so we get to camp and i'm just like stewing on this and I'm getting more and more freaked out by it because at this point it's like he knows where I'm camped and from what I knew about this guy like he would show up to where girls were camped and wait for them to wake up and so I was all on edge I didn't get to sleep until probably like 3 a.m. that night so that meant that I slept in when I woke up everyone was gone and that's when I really got scared because I was alone I was alone and like I was basically hiking on a trail that like he knew the route and he knew all the road crossings I would come across he just knew everything so I made the decision to take alternate routes and get to the it was called the AT stand which was a place where you could get um, Wi-Fi and sit and take a break and so I got there, met up with the rest of the group. I talked about how I was feeling. They gave me more information <laughs> that I didn't have before. And um, we decided as a group that it would be best to call the police. They showed up promptly. We had his license plate. The police officer looked him up in the system, brought up his photo and it was him. And he drove around to the different trailheads and patrolled while we hiked just to make sure that the guy didn't show up there. That ended up working out really well and I was actually really happy with the way that we were treated by the police because I've had so many not good encounters with police that I really just had no faith I guess that it would turn out okay um, but I actually did feel supported. Once we kind of got past like where the cookie lady was, I wasn't scared anymore because I was kind of out of his area. But after that, I felt completely safe. Those are my creepy um, AT creepo stories. I was actually kind of surprised I had that many creepy encounters because like all the videos I watched, you know, where women are hiking by themselves, they don't really, at least they don't really like mention creepy things happening very often. Like maybe they'll have like one creepy encounter the whole time and I had five so that's just what happens I guess sometimes a lot of things happen sometimes nothing happens and it's just luck of the draw I guess thank you for watching and happy trails